week, Lab TV travels to the MIT Lincoln Laboratory in Lexington, Massachusetts to meet an engineer who builds and tests radar antennas. Well, we use antennas in our everyday life all around us. You have an antenna inside your laptop that transmits and receives Wi-Fi signals. You have antennas in your car, which receive radio waves. And you have uh, antennas in your GPS device that talk with the satellites that are above us 24 hours a day. The military use antennas to communicate long distances, and military also uses antennas in their radars. RADAR is an acronym that stands for Radio Detection and Ranging, and it's a technique that we use to determine the presence and location, as well as velocity, of an object such as an airplane or a ship or even a person. Radar is used for navigation, airport traffic control, surveillance, police radar guns, and all sorts of mapping. Radar can also help scientists analyze storms and predict the weather. Radar works by having a radar transmitter turn on and shoot out a pulse of electromagnetic energy. That pulse then travels to the target where it bounces off and then the radar listens for the echo off of that target. So radar pulses are electromagnetic waves and so they travel at the speed of light, which we know very well. The radar can tell how far away an object is by measuring the time of flight that the radar pulse takes. Radar tracking, along with Doppler measurements, can tell you where something is going and its velocity. Doppler is a very interesting effect that you probably hear every day. For instance, if you're at a racetrack, you hear a higher pitch as the car's coming at you, and then that shifts to a lower pitch as the car passes and is going away from you. That change in pitch happens because the sound waves are compressed as the car approaches and expanded as the car drives away. We use that same phenomenon here in our radar to be able to tell the velocity of the target that we just detected. Here at the lab, John and the other engineers create some of the most advanced radar systems in the world. We design and then build the antennas and then we use this facility here in order to measure them to make sure that they work. So this is an anechoic chamber and what this is is a giant shielded metal room where no outside electromagnetic waves can pass into it. Then we put absorber that brings down the ambient noise level in the chamber down to whisper quiet so that we can do very precise measurements on our antennas. The absorber material is made of a spongy foam with lots of carbon. It covers the metal walls to keep the radar waves from bouncing around. Radar antennas are designed to send and receive signals over many miles. The anechoic chamber lets the engineers do the initial testing indoors. It recreates long distances by using a giant reflector in the shape of a parabola. Waves are bounced off the reflector, focused back on a receiver, and then analyzed. We use a precise radar called an instrumentation radar in order to do our antenna measurements. We measure things like the, the gain as well as uh, an echo that uh, a, a target might have that the radar would actually see. The engineers also take their antennas out into the real world and test them on airplanes. That's right, we stuff those aircraft full with radar transmitters and receivers and all the digital processing hardware, everything that you need to have to make a radar system work. One of the things that I really enjoy about being an engineer is that the technology is always changing. Materials are always getting better, computers are getting faster, so you get to uh, build things and test them. You get to come up with your own ideas and then test it and make sure that it works. To find out more about antennas, radar, and anechoic chambers, check out labtvonline.org.